Be Your Spirit, A Guide to Happiness and Self-Realization Based on the Yoga Sutras Western Medicine and Mental Health It is normal to have negative thoughts and emotions, but it is wise to return your mind to a calm state as soon as possible. Circular thinking is the opposite of settling mental disturbance. Circular thinking involves continuously churning the waters of your mind by dwelling upon negative thoughts. Psychological therapists refer to circular thinking as ruminating or perseverating. It is a mental process of continuously reviewing disturbing mental information without ever coming to a conclusion. Circular thinking feels like an activity that is generating a solution to a problem, but actually it only stirs up negative emotions. Worrying is a form of circular thinking that involves replaying fearful thoughts about the future. For example, if you are awaiting the results of an important test, worrying about the outcome will have no productive effect. Worrying usually involves considering a list of many possible outcomes over and over again, or fearing a specific outcome. Circular thinking is a bad mental habit that feeds upon itself. The more you engage in circular thinking, the more likely it will become a habit. Mindfulness is the first step towards stopping your circular thinking. When you find yourself dwelling on disturbing thoughts, take a moment to examine whether you are engaged in problem solving or circular thinking. It is problem solving if there is a possible solution that you are working towards. If you do not have enough information to reach a conclusion, or if there is no possible solution, then it is circular thinking. Repeatedly reviewing possible outcomes can impede your ability to make a final decision and take action. The phrase paralysis by analysis refers to the process of continuously examining options to the point that you become overwhelmed and frozen in chronic indecisiveness. Once you have identified that you're engaged in circular thinking, the next step is to stop. Knowing you are thinking in a circular fashion doesn't mean it'll be easy to stop it. People engage in circular thinking for a reason. It feels like they are doing something productive or fixing a problem. In order to interrupt circular thinking, it is important to remind yourself that it is not productive and that it creates negative emotions. One way to interrupt circular thinking is to make a deal with yourself that you will take a break or return to it later. Promise yourself that you will stop circular thinking for one hour and then return to it. If you are successful in taking a break from circular thinking for an hour, then you can gradually increase the time period to days or weeks. A second technique to reduce circular thinking is to use a paradoxical approach. Find a private place and promise yourself that you will engage in circular thinking for one hour. Promise yourself that you will have a circular thought process on one particular topic for an hour. Use a computer or notepad to write down your circular thoughts as they arise for that period. If you find yourself thinking about a different topic, force your mind to return to the circular thinking process. This is a paradoxical technique because the more you force yourself to do circular thinking, the less likely you will be able to do so. It is a good idea to get an evaluation from a licensed psychologist or social worker if you're having problems with anxiety, depression, or addiction. Ideally, you would follow up this evaluation with at least a few therapy sessions. Everyone can benefit from therapeutic counseling, and much more so if you are having issues with anxiety, depression, or addiction. Working with a therapist is no different than receiving any other type of professional service. There are good therapists and bad ones. 
feel free to shop around for the one that is right for you. Be cautious of therapists that act simply as your personal cheerleader. A good therapist will skillfully help you explore aspects of yourself that you would rather not talk about. Additionally, your therapist can help you examine whether or not your symptoms warrant an evaluation for psychiatric medication. If you feel that you want to try medication, then it is best to be evaluated by a psychiatrist rather than a general physician. Psychiatric medication is no different than any other type of Western medicine. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and often there are side effects. Finding the best medication for your symptoms may involve a little trial and error. It can take weeks for some psychiatric medications to take effect, so you should be ready to give your medicine a chance to work. If you find your symptoms do not improve very much, your symptoms worsen, or if there are significant side effects, then it is time to talk to your doctor about changing dosages or changing the medication entirely. Be cautious about treating anxiety with medication as many of the anti-anxiety medications are addictive. Ideally, you want to use these medications sparingly while seeking to manage your anxiety through other means. Yoga breathing exercises are ideal for developing the capacity to shift your nervous system into a relaxation response. A psychiatric evaluation can also be appropriate for people with addiction problems. It is often the case that people abuse drugs or alcohol in order to manage a separate psychiatric symptom. Aside from medication, those in recovery for addiction can greatly benefit from supportive counseling and group therapy. Attending a 12-step program is especially helpful for recovering addicts as it provides social support and strategies for staying sober. A relaxation response exercise. There are moments during an emotional crisis when you may feel overwhelmed by negative emotions. The loss of something or someone important to you can provoke an emotional crisis. Threats to your safety in any form can produce strong negative emotions. An emotional crisis is typically accompanied by emotions of sadness, anxiety, fear, or rage. It is important to carefully manage these emotions so that you avoid doing something you might regret later, such as hurting yourself or others. The quickest and most effective technique for calming your negative emotions is breath control. Your breathing is intimately connected to your nervous system. Through breath control, you can shift your nervous system away from negative emotions and toward relaxation. More specifically, you can shift your nervous system from a fight or flight state to a relaxation response. The autonomic nervous system is the default controller of your mind and body. It is like your body's autopilot. It is a system that operates autonomously or independently from your consciousness. The autonomic nervous system regulates your body's vital organs and maintains conditions that support your life. The autonomic nervous system consists of two branches, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. The sympathetic system is associated with a fight or flight response. The fight or flight response is a group of physiological responses that are triggered when the brain perceives a threat. It consists of sending signals to stimulate vital organs such as the adrenal glands, heart, and vascular system. Stimulation of these organs prepares the body for a maximum physical exertion, which can be of benefit when fighting or fleeing from danger. In contrast, the parasympathetic nervous system inhibits vital organs, resulting in a relaxation response. The relaxation response involves slowing down vital organs and is accompanied by feelings of safety, security, and well-being. 
In nature, the relaxation response occurs when an animal returns to its burrow after a long day of struggling to survive the dangers of the wild. Once in the safe haven of its burrow, the animal's nervous system shifts from vigilance to relaxation and recuperation. When you are feeling overwhelmed by negative emotions, you can intentionally shift yourself into a deep relaxation response by regulating your breathing. The technique is simple. Take long, deep, and slow breaths. The following is a guide for practicing the relaxation response. For this exercise, you will need to lie down on your back. Allow your arms to relax out by your sides, palms up. Make sure your legs are outstretched with your heels close together. They do not need to be touching. Inhale slowly and gradually fill your lungs until you reach maximum inhalation. Bring your awareness to the inside of your lungs and visualize the oxygen filling every inch of your lungs capacity. Push yourself to fill your lungs completely. Now exhale very slowly. When you reach the end of your exhalation, give a little extra push to get the last of the air out. Repeat this process. Ideally, your exhalation should be slower than your inhalation. Monitor the ratio of inhalation to exhalation by counting silently during each phase. Slow down your exhalation so that it is longer than your previous inhalation. Within 10 breath cycles, you will have begun to shift your nervous system into a relaxation response. Within 20 breaths, you are likely to fall asleep if you are tired.